So what is going on everybody? Fernando Silva here with another video and today we're going to be reviewing one of the dopest accessories that has come into the studio in a very very long time and it is a mechanical keyboard with a built-in monitor right into the keyboard itself. So let's talk about this thing, see who it's for, see how it works, and see why anybody would need something like this because this thing is actually super dope. But let's get into it. So before we get into the actual device itself, let's find out what you get in the box. So this is by a company called Quumzy. If you guys have seen my channel before, they sent over a really nice dual monitor setup for an on-the-go like MacBook Air or even on a Windows machine. It had like two screens that you kind of like mount to the back of it. So Quumzy was nice enough to actually send over their mechanical keyboard, which is a multifunctional touchscreen mechanical keyboard. So we'll touch on that in a little bit. But in the box itself, you get everything that you would need with this keyboard, right? So you get the device itself, you get a USB-C to USB-C cable because it is a USB-C compatible device. And then you also get an HDMI to USB-C plus USB-A. So if you do have a monitor or if you're on an M1 machine, where you need to kind of mess around with an HDMI display and also a USB-C display, you're also more than fine and more than welcome to do that because it, that cable does come in the box. You also get a really nice soft like palm rest for the keyboard itself because the keyboard does sit a little bit higher than normal keyboards because again, you have an entire display built into it. So they do include that in the box. And then finally, you get a little tool to remove all the little keycaps if you do want to switch them out because this is a mechanical keyboard and it is compatible with any custom switches that you have. So I'm going to be able to put some of the keys from the Air 60 that I reviewed a little while ago and put it on here and kind of mix and match however I see fit. So overall, in the packaging, you get everything that you need from the cables to a nice little wrist rest, which is a nice little added bonus, and then the keycap remover. It doesn't bring any extra keycaps, but if you have some extra ones, you're more than welcome to switch them out. So now let's talk about all the specs of this machine and get that out of the way before we start talking about how we're actually using it. So again, you're dealing with a 1920 by 515 display, so it's very, very crisp, very bright, and it sits at a three by one aspect ratio. So it is extremely long. Again, it runs the entire length in the keyboard and it is very short. So it's a three to one aspect ratio with that 1920 by 515, which I think technically it makes it a 3K display, although they don't advertise it at all, but I see the crispness is actually very, very good. And then lastly, you get that 1200 to one contrast ratio, which again, it does kind of show through this display. It is a glossy display. So if you have a lot of lights around you, especially aiming down at your desk, there's gonna be a decent amount of reflection. So maybe aim your, Maybe aim your lamps a little bit higher or maybe put the keyboard at a little bit of a tilt to make sure you don't get so much glare on the screen itself because it is a glossy display and a glossy finish. And then of course the cherry on top of this monitor or this display on the keyboard is that it is fully touchscreen, right? So it's not gonna be as good as let's say an iPad or a dedicated tablet, but for a quick kind of like point and drag. So you're able to move around windows, you're able to resize windows. It works as if it is a touchscreen and it does replicate the mouse situation. So it's not perfect, perfect. I do wish they had a pen implementation to really get a pinpoint and maybe use it for like more design tasks and things like that. But for a quick little touchscreen, I don't know, it could be a better implementation than what Apple did with their touch bar because you can actually use this touch screen for more than just some simple stuff. So overall, I'm loving the touch functionality of this keyboard. Oh, and then lastly, I can't forget, it is a 60 hertz display. So you're not getting that full 120, but you're also not getting 30. So 60 hertz display right there, it's always good to have. And it does help with that touch functionality because it makes it move a little bit better than let's say something that's like 30 hertz. But now again, this thing is hefty. Like this is not going to be moving around with you too, too often. So this is about 1.2 kilograms, which I think is like four-ish pounds, maybe three and a half pounds. This is meant to stay at your desk because it is a full mechanical keyboard. It doesn't have the number pad to the right. So I guess it's not technically a full mechanical keyboard, but you guys know exactly what I mean. But then on top of that, it's got a whole display literally and figuratively that it's got to take into account. So that's where the weight comes in. It is a little bit thicker than a normal keyboard. Don't expect this to be super small and compact, but if you really want to bring it with you, you definitely can. Just make sure that screen is protected and you have something to cover it with, which is something else that does come in the packaging, which is a nice little like cover for the keyboard. So now let's talk about how this works. So all you need to do is, especially if you have a Mac OS computer, M1 MacBook Air, or anything along those lines, it's just a single USB-C cable. So the USB-C cable that comes from the MacBook will not only power the keyboard itself, but also power the display for the keyboard. So if you are moving on the go, or maybe you have a setup where it's, all you're using is your laptop with this keyboard, then it's a very, very easy setup and implementation. But if you wanna use, let's say, a real monitor, with the MacBook Air and then also the keyboard, then you're gonna have to get yourself a display link ready USB-C hub. I'll link some down in the description below if you guys do wanna check them out because that is probably the perfect situation. But if you do have something like a Mac mini or an M1 Pro, M1 Max, M1 Ultra, then you'll be fine. You don't need to get this display link ready hub. It's only if you have the M1 MacBook Air and the M1 MacBook Pro from 2020 where you do need to have that workaround because those were only meant to work with one singular secondary display. 
But outside of that, it's a very simple setup. Like I said, just one single cable to the actual keyboard itself to power it and to power the display. So I know in the comments, I'm gonna get a lot of questions on, is this actually something that's useful for productivity or is it more like a gimmick proof of concept because we did see, I think Asus, maybe about a year or maybe two years ago, they launched their series. I forget the exact name of it. I'm gonna link it down below or maybe put the name right here but they put these kind of secondary displays in the keyboard itself. They first did it with their 15 inch laptop and then they moved it down to the 13 inch laptop. And for the most part, I also thought it was kind of a gimmicky situation, right? Like it's too small of a display, it's too long and narrow of a display to actually work for anything. And then in the situation with the laptops, they moved the actual trackpad to the bottom right, which I thought was a little bit weird because everybody's so used to having the trackpad right center in the middle underneath the keyboard. But this kind of alleviates that situation because there's no trackpad built into this. You're still using your own external mouse when using it with this display and using it with your laptop or your setup holistically. So that situation isn't really there. But when it comes to a function versus gimmick situation, I've actually been using it from a function standpoint pretty decently. So what I've been using that screen for is mostly twofold, right? So it's for at a glance information. So let's say I'm researching something where I need to get the information at a glance very quickly. The fact that it's so wide actually fits a lot of text on there. So as long as you have like a website that does kind of mesh well with that screen resolution, all you have to do is extend it all the way and then you have so many lines of text that you're able to read, analyze, and take into account. But then also I use it for maybe my Spotify playlist or if I'm listening to a video podcast, I put it down in the bottom left corner so it doesn't kind of interrupt exactly what I'm looking at on my main screen and doesn't kill my productivity. So my main use for this has been for the apps that I like to put normally that I minimize into my dock, but sometimes I always go back to them. So these are for the apps that are pretty much being used in the background, but I like to have some visibility onto them. So things like Spotify, things like podcasts, video podcasts, YouTube, anything that involves text, even small PowerPoint presentations or things that involve very, very long lines of Excel code, right? Or Excel databases where the columns stretch from all the way from A to like double A AA and triple A. So if you guys use Excel, you know who you are and you guys understand that reference. But overall, I really like the functionality. And if somebody does walk into your office and they see this keyboard, it is the ultimate conversation starter because they're going to be like, whoa, what is this? What is it used for? This is so cool. Is it worth it? And so far, it really has been. And then the final few things that I'll mention about this keyboard by Quumzy is that it does have some kickstands on the back of it. So it does kind of prop up to an angle a little bit to help you with the viewing angles. Because like I mentioned with those Asus laptops, that screen that they put on the keyboard part or the keyboard portion of the laptop actually tilts up. So having the little kickstands on the bottom is actually a really good thing because this Quumzy one doesn't actually tilt up the screen at all. So you are looking at it downwards. So it is again for those applications that you're trying to maybe see at a glance but you don't want them to get in your sight or in your way and kind of ruin whatever you're doing on your main screen. And then lastly, the build quality is great. I already mentioned what the screen is kind of made out of, so it is a very glossy display, but everything else is a matte finish. It's made out of aluminum. The keys are made of plastic, but overall it's a great build quality device. And when you pick it up, you really do feel it because like I mentioned, this thing is like three, four pounds. So <laughs> keep it at your desk. Don't really bring it with you unless you're gonna be somewhere for a long time or you just wanna have some conversation starters at a coffee shop. But let's finish up this video, but overall, clumsy, they're doing some good stuff over there. So as you guys saw, pretty much this is just a keyboard with a built-in monitor in it in the simplest form. It's a full-on mechanical keyboard, which comes pretty much ready for the Windows side. But again, it does work on the Mac OS side, which is what I was using it for. But overall, I do love the product, right? Some people might say it's a little bit gimmicky, but I can see a real use case for having smaller applications on the bottom screen, maybe smaller videos, podcast style stuff. So maybe stuff that you wanna have on your screen, but don't use it all the time, but also don't wanna minimize it a lot. So overall, I think it's a great accessory. The build quality is great. The screen, I believe is like a 3K resolution if you really think about it, because it is 1920 by 515. So it, it is very, very crisp. It gives you a nice little like touch screen panel. So I, it's probably like what the touch bar wanted to be in all reality. I will leave it linked below if you guys do wanna check it out because it does work with Mac OS, with Windows, with Android. Technically it works with the iPad screen as well, but eh, it's not gonna work that well. So don't get it just for the iPad, at least not until iPad OS 16. But that's new for this video. If you guys made it to the end, leave a little dolphin. And if you guys wanna see some more accessories on the iPad, Mac OS, or even on the iPhone side, click on one of these videos and stay tuned for some iPad OS updates coming soon. I'm out of here.